Hello, I'm Judith Han. Going into hospital can be stressful, particularly if you're unsure of what lies ahead. It can also be a worrying time for your family and other people close to you. So this video has been produced by GEM Medical to give you a clearer understanding of your particular medical problem. It will guide you through your operation, explain what will happen to you while you're in hospital and help to reassure you about the surgical procedures involved. We answer all those common questions like why the operation is needed in the first place, which surgical procedure is best, how much pain is involved, how long the hospital stay will be, and how soon till normal life resumes. To understand the formation of gallstones, we need to take a step back and look at the digestive system as a whole. As we all know, digestion is the body's system for extracting the goodness from the food we eat and disposing of the unwanted waste. As soon as we eat or drink, our food is showered by digestive juices from the time it enters the mouth throughout its long journey through the stomach and intestine. These digestive juices, saliva, stomach acid, bile, pancreatic juice and so on, are all produced by different organs, varying in both their constituents and function. It's the precipitation of bile that causes the formation of gallstones. Bile is a bitter yellow-green fluid produced by the liver and stored in the gallbladder. It has two main functions. First, it carries away waste products removed from the blood by the liver in a similar way that urine carries away waste products removed from the blood by the kidneys. Second, as part of the digestive process, bile helps break down fats in our food. However, although bile is only needed after you've had a meal, it's made by the liver all the time. And this is where the gallbladder comes in, storing the bile until the food arrives. While it's being stored, water's extracted from the bile by the gallbladder, which makes the bile more concentrated. Normally this system works smoothly, but if some of the dissolved chemicals come out of solution as the bile becomes more concentrated, gallstones can form. This process is known as precipitation and it's similar to the way limescale forms in a kettle. Sometimes stones can form in the bile ducts, but because precipitation is always more likely if a solution is concentrated and not moving, they usually form in the gallbladder. In most cases, people with gallstones have no symptoms at all and in fact may never realise they're there. But gallstones can give rise to a number of problems the first indication of which is a feeling of discomfort or pain. Inflammation and low-grade infection produce a dull, nauseating pain in the pit of the stomach. If the inflammation spreads beyond the gallbladder to surrounding tissues, sharp pain and tenderness under the ribs on the right-hand side of the body may also result. Inflammation is a typical reaction of body tissue irritated by abrasive hard lumps. There's therefore a tendency for the gallbladder to become inflamed when stones form, in much the same way as your finger becomes sore if you get a splinter. Also, the surface of the gallstone is rough and can harbour bacteria out of reach of the body's defences, leading to infection. The worst pain occurs if a stone blocks the tube leading away from the gallbladder, the cystic duct. In attempting to clear the blockage, the gallbladder squeezes the bile tighter and tighter. The pressure build-up causes the pain known as colic. It can be very nasty and may even need strong pain-killing injections. You will almost certainly have experienced some of these symptoms, which is a reason in itself to have your gallbladder removed. Removal of the gallbladder will also prevent further complications because the pain caused with low-grade infection and inflammation is only part of the story. There are several other possible conditions associated with gallstones which, though less common, are potentially more serious. Like ascending cholangitis, pancreatitis and jaundice. Even if you have had an ERCP or recovered from pancreatitis or ascending cholangitis, you will still need an operation to remove your gallbladder. But many patients wonder why surgery is necessary at all and often ask why their stones can't be dissolved with medicines. In fact, gallstones can be dissolved, but only in limited circumstances. Yes, you can dissolve gallstones provided, one, the gallstones are very small and two, the gallbladder is working normally. 
and those two prerequisites exclude a lot of people from the possibility of gallstone dissolution. The other major problem with dissolving gallstones is that the pills you take, you have to take for a long time in order to dissolve the gallstones and then have to carry on taking them once the gallstones have gone to stop them reforming. So dissolving stones is likely to be just a temporary answer. Gallstones do have a tendency to recur. The chances of stones recurring are far lower if the whole gallbladder is removed. So the obvious question is, don't we need our gallbladders? Surprisingly, the answer is no, you can manage perfectly well without a gallbladder and live a perfectly healthy life without it. And you have to remember that if your gallbladder is full of stones, then the chances are it's not working properly anyway. The newer, more high-tech method is called laparoscopic surgery, or sometimes keyhole surgery. By this method, three or four half-inch incisions are made in your abdomen for tubes to be inserted with miniature TV cameras and surgical instruments at the end of them. Once the operation is finished, patients spend some time in the recovery area of theatre so they can be closely monitored until fully awake. Then it's back to their room and they will soon be brought some much welcome food and drink. Most patients will be able to go home later the same day after a straightforward lap coli, as the operation is usually called. Return to full normal activity, work, exercise and leisure pursuits is just whenever patients feel ready. This varies from two to three days or can be as long as two weeks. Tiredness after any operation performed under a general anaesthetic can be quite a common problem. As with any procedure, there can be occasional complications and these are described on our website www.gallstoneoperation.com which also has all our contact details.